The Nooksack River flows through some of the most dramatic terrain in the country. Its course starts at glaciers and high mountain streams, then travels through dense forests and farmlands before entering the Salish Sea. But researchers have recently discovered an invisible pollutant inhabiting the Nooksack's waters. Heat. Climate change and the past century of human development alongside the river's banks had warmed the water to the point where native salmon had trouble spawning. Water that once flowed through shaded corridors now baked in the sun as forests gave way to roads, farms, and clear cuts. The Nooksack Basin is broken up into three basins, the North Fork, the Middle Fork, and the South Fork. And it just so happens the South Fork is the unglaciated basin and has a little bit lower relief. So it relies primarily on that snowmelt and that snowpack. It is the stream right now that's being more impacted by stream temperature inputs. Over the years, the Nooksack Indian tribe saw dwindling salmon populations in their river. To them, the fish are a cultural resource and treaty right. Fish that use the river, nine species of Pacific salmon and salmonids, they need to have cool water that doesn't exceed certain temperatures. The numbers of salmon returning to the river have been hugely depressed. Less than 10% of the returning salmon that occurred in the late 1800s occur under today's conditions. That's a huge reduction in the number of salmon. A lot of that reduction has to do with water quality in the river. In 2010, the Washington State Department of Ecology added the South Fork of the Nooksack River to the list of polluted waters, the Clean Water Act 303D list. Once the South Fork went on the list, Washington came up with a daily limit for the pollutant, in this case, hot water. But any action to meet that target amount would be voluntary, so the tribe decided to take charge of cleaning up, or cooling down, the Nooksack River. But the tribe wanted to focus the restoration strategy to make sure it would stand up to the impacts of climate change over the next century. Another branch of the EPA, Office of Research Development, was developing a climate change pilot project to show how climate change could be addressed in a temperature total maximum daily load project. And they decided that the South Fork Nooksack River would make a perfect test case. And so we've been working with the EPA on this since about 2012. What that project does, it evaluates the effectiveness of existing restoration programs and then how those existing tools could be reprioritized to be more effective in the face of climate change and then what additional actions in the watershed that could be implemented that would further address the water quality issues in the river. They partnered with local researchers at Western Washington University and ran climate models on the river. To look into the future, for example, let's say we want to look at projections of how the climate will impact the basin. The only opportunity to do that is through numerical modeling. There are institutions all over the world that generate scenarios of what that future climate might look like. And we look at 20 different meteorological scenarios to see how the basin might respond to that all the way into the end of the century. But the idea is to hopefully from our modeling, we're trying to model how those stream temperatures change. We can focus on regions that might be more sensitive and that tribes can key in on developing riparian buffers. Our studies show that much more has to be done if we're gonna protect the river from the adverse effects of climate change. The additional measures include providing access of the river to its floodplain, restoring wetlands, doing more riparian planting, working with forestry to voluntarily modify their harvest plans to be less impactful on the watershed. We know that climate's getting warmer, we can't change that. There's delays, there'll be decades before any kind of change will, will actually occur. We can't stop that, so we know that temperatures are gonna get warmer. The only way that I'm aware of to change and protect the streams is by these riparian corridors. In general, society wants to have clean water. Clean water is a sign of an advanced society. This watershed plan doesn't tell all of these land users what to do. It says, gee, 
we've identified opportunities that these various land users could implement to do their contribution to try to help the river come back into compliance with the water quality standards. I would say tribal entities, municipalities, they're much more on the grassroots levels of understanding this is going to impact us. We believe climate change is occurring and we're going to try to figure out what's going on. Even though our federal government might not buy into this currently, right, that it's still an issue at the grassroots levels where municipalities and tribes, they don't care what the federal government, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to anticipate this is occurring and we need to understand what we're facing.